Hi, Hi Tanya. Tanya. Hello, how are you? Very good. How are you today? I'm fine, thank you. Thank you so much for talking with us today. You bet. Um, I actually have thyroid disease myself, so I'm, I'm very interested in your input on uh, several different areas. Great. Um, we have a large reader base that uh, struggles with thyroid disease as well, so uh, I think um, they'll be interested in some of your responses as well. Wondering what you're seeing today as one of the most uh, prevalent uh, thyroid conditions that are affecting people. Well, I'm here today uh, to increase the public's awareness of thyroid cancer. Uh, when I started giving talks on thyroid cancer back in uh, the, the year 2000, our data suggested that there were 18,000 new thyroid cancers in the United States every year. That number is up to 56,000 anticipated in 2012. So there has been a, an incredible three-fold uh, burst of thyroid cancer over the last 12 years and nobody really knows why. So uh, this being Thyroid Cancer Awareness Month, uh, we decided that it was, it was time to take our message to the American public and, and talk to them a little bit about how to de what the early detective me detecting mechanisms are for thyroid cancer. And do you feel that, that the next check is the best way for people to go to start that process? Absolutely. And, uh, it, it's a simple thing to do in the morning when you get up uh, to put your makeup on or, or brush your teeth. Simply pick up a glass of water, take a sip, and tilt your head back looking at your neck as you swallow right below the Adam's apple on either side of the windpipe and look to see if you see a bump go by when you swallow. And I can demonstrate a lump to you here on the left thyroid lobe on my model. So we want uh, patients to be on the lookout and if they feel a lump or see a lump we want them to contact their primary care physicians and uh, get evaluated. Do you feel that primary care physicians are the best option versus finding an endocrinologist? Sometimes they're the only option. Uh, if there are other options available like endocrinologists that's a great place to go to. But our problem in endocrinology is that we're only about 6,500 strong in the United States. So uh, there is a lot better availability of primary care doctors. And uh, if you happen to be lucky enough to have a local endocrinologist, that's a great place to start. And do you have any tips for people to, to find an endocrinologist or the right endocrinologist? Yes, they can go to our website, which is aace.com. Or they, if they want to learn more about thyroid diseases and thyroid cancer, they can go to uh, thyroidawareness.com. Um, I actually found uh, my lump through just a self-check myself and went through my primary care physician. I, I've kind of followed this path. Um, I ended up having um, a biopsy that was inconclusive. Is that typical that biopsies a lot of times are inconclusive? It's becoming uh, less and less of a problem. It was a big problem 10 years ago. And as a matter of fact, there were a lot of places in the country where the inconclusive rate was 30%. Uh, but with new, uh, with, with more cytologists, people who look at thyroid biopsies, on, look at the thyroid cells on slides, with people focusing exclusively on thyroid cytology, uh, we've gotten better. And with the addition of new technology that allows us to look at the DNA and RNA in the thyroid cell that you take out with the needle, we can even be better with the inconclusive diagnosis. We can find out which patients are more likely to have benign disease and not require surgery and which patients are, are much more likely to have cancer. So that's a big addition that we've just had. Uh, the genetic analysis has just been available over the last year, year and a half which is wonderful because that kind of follows up. Mine was 10 years ago, so um, right. it's nice to see that the course would be, you know, different today, um, which is wonderful. Are we still seeing um, papillary as the most common form of cancer? Yes, papillary okay. cancer is the most common. The big thing with papillary is making sure that there are not lymph nodes involved around the thyroid. Uh, and the biggest mistakes that I see in my practice are people who get 
their thyroids removed and don't get a full evaluation of whether the lymph nodes are enlarged uh, out in the wide part of the neck known as the lateral neck. So uh, the, the biggest new thing in, in imaging before surgery is to be sure that your imaging physician looks not only at the center of the neck with their ultrasound probe, but also out wide in the neck to make sure there aren't lymph nodes that are involved with thyroid cancer. Because if you don't take those in involved nodes out, with the initial surgery, you can't kill them with the subsequent radioiodine. Radioiodine is only good for microscopic cancer. Okay. And um, most medical, if, if that's the route that's gone, the primary care physician suspects cancer, they're going to get you connected with the right imaging doctor and, and that route, or are there things that the patient themselves should be knowing and looking and asking to be sure that they, they're hooked up for a doctor that's going to do that? I think the biggest, the most important um, recommendation I can give to patients once, the, once they're diagnosed with a thyroid nodule is to get to an expert in thyroid cancer care, and that typically is your local endocrinologist. Or better yet, get to an expert in thyroid cancer care who does his or her own office ultrasonography. Uh, with that combination and with a surgeon who does a lot of thyroid cancer surgery, that's the key to getting a good outcome. It's that first surgery, getting the right surgery done, getting the thyroid cancer in the thyroid out, as well as any cancer that you can see in the lymph nodes. That all needs to come out at the same time. And then uh, uh, radioactive iodine does a nice job of cleaning up any microscopic disease that might exist afterwards. As a matter of fact, if you've got a small enough cancer and no lymph node involvement, you may not even need radioactive iodine treatment. What kind of follow-up treatment then should someone who maybe had um, no cancer found or um, possible early stage cancer found, what's, what's the, the treatment going forward just besides supplementation and continued follow-up? If you have a bunch of thyroid nodules that are, that are found to be benign, you just need to get those followed with routine ultrasound every one to two years, depending on size. and. Uh, if you have microscopic cancer, there's still debate about it, but most, uh, most endocrine surgeons in my neck of the woods take the entire thyroid out for that. There's still argument about whether you can take a single lobe for microscopic cancer, uh, for small cancers. But in our, in our area, we do a full thyroidectomy, so we don't have to uh, uh, mutcher the patient with ultrasound and biopsy over and over again over a period of years. Lots of, these patient, lots of these patients are very young women, and to, to have to go in every, every year and get a new biopsy uh, is a lot to ask. So, um, in general, we advocate full thyroidectomy once we find thyroid cancer. Is there additional metabolic concerns, then, for patients who have had a full thyroidectomy um, and things nutritionally that we should be looking at and helping them with uh, after the fact? Well, the key thing is taking your thyroid hormone every day, the same time of day, the same way, and away from any supplements like iron, soy, vitamins, or calcium. Uh, with, if you do that, you're going to do very, you're going to do very well. The doctor, of course, has to follow the TSH blood test. And do you see a benefit to natural versus synthetic um, thyroid supplementation? The, uh, my preference is to use uh, thyroid hormone as T4 uh, because the natural supplements, uh, the T4 content is not measured. They measure the total iodine content, so you don't really know how much thyroid hormone is in there. You don't know how much T4 is in there. There's a lot of T3 in the, in the natural supplements, and, and that can uh, cause some issues.